Hello everybody! Let's make some fry bread. I did a story time video um, yesterday, on May 6th, today's May 7th, when I'm recording this. Uh, in the video we read this book, Fry Bread, by Kevin Noble Millard, and it's all about uh, fry bread, which is an American Indian tradition. It goes across different tribes and there are variations on it. Uh, but the author makes the point that it's a tradition for a bunch of different tribes. And so I thought we'd try and make some today. He has a recipe in the back here. It's Kevin's fry bread. But we're going to do it a little differently. Um, I've got my stuff out here. I've got some ingredients I need. I've got a pencil. Uh, because I like to, uh, maybe I want to make notes on my recipe. I've got my recipe in my old recipe binder. Um, this recipe is an old one from when I was a kid. I wrote this one down uh, when I was a kid because I used, I grew up in the state of Utah and I used to visit the Navajo Indian Reservation and they make uh, a kind of fry bread that uh, they turn into tacos a lot. Uh, they put lettuce and tomatoes on it. Um, here's my old recipe. Indian fry bread. That was the old name I used. It's uh, Navajo fry bread. The one thing I like about this recipe is it's very simple. One cup of flour, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of sugar, um, that's how I'll do it. And some water. It doesn't even say how much water. We'll just, we're just going to make it work. I'll show you how, how we do it. Uh, but first, I want to tell you about a, a professional cook who's going to be giving a presentation for you on June 6th. It's going to be online on the computer. Um, and if you want to sign up, you can go to Authors and Artists Festival. Dot wordpress .com. The chef is named Deanna Cook, and she writes some awesome cookbooks for kids, including Baking Class and Cooking Class. And she's got one called Global Feast that was checked out from the library, so I, I couldn't share it with you because someone else is enjoying it. Uh, Deanna Cook is great, and she writes wonderful cookbooks for kids, and she's going to cook strawberry shortcake with us. So I hope you sign up for that. It's on June 6th. Check out the website and uh, go sign up if you're interested. Now, another reason that I was making fry bread today, in addition to having read that book, is because... A lot of people are stuck at home and a lot of people have been baking. So many people have been baking that stores have been running out of yeast. I don't know if you know what yeast does in bread, but it helps it rise up. Um, this recipe doesn't use yeast. Instead, it uses some baking powder as the agent that helps the bread rise up. And it's not baked. It's fried. That's why they call it fry bread. Okay, let's get to it. I've got my recipe, I got my pencil, and I've got some of my equipment out here. And I'm not a professional, but I told you about the professional who's coming on June 6th. Check it out, ask us at the library if you have any questions about it. First step, a cup of flour. Now we don't really need to be very precise because our measurements aren't super precise in this recipe. But I wanted to te teach you a technique if you want to be precise with your measurement of flour. The most precise way is to do it by weight, but we're not going to weigh it out. Uh, the second option, um, if you scoop through flour, it kind of compacts it in a way that um, changes how much there is. So instead, if you don't want to scoop through it, I've got a little bowl here to help to help my cleanup. I lightly scoop out and drop it in the, in my cup. Now all the excess is falling into the, my little bowl, so I don't have to worry about cleanup so much. I'll show you how easy the cleanup is. Oops, look at that. That's okay. We make 
mistakes all the time. And now there's a little too much in there, but that was intentional. I'll scrape it off the top, and that's my cup. Now I have to think about what bowl to put it in. I'm gonna mix these ingredients together. I want my bowl to be big enough, but not too big. It's gotta have a cup of flour, a few teaspoons of other stuff, and some water. So I think this is gonna be a good size. I'm gonna drop my flour right in there. And quick cleanup of that flour, dump that in there, all done with the flour. A teaspoon of sugar. Here's my sugar. Here's my teaspoon. Plop that in there. And a teaspoon of baking powder to make it uh, rise up a little bit. And a teaspoon of salt. So I'll open up my salt container. That looks like a lot. I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of salt. Half teaspoon of salt. And you might have noticed there's honey out here on the table. It's because when it's done frying, a little honey on it is delicious. And I got some local honey. I was fortunate to get that. One reason to get local, there are a few reasons to get local honey. Uh, one reason is to support your local farmers. Another reason is uh, honey, as you know, is made from bees that are eating the nectar of the flowers around us. And if you eat local honey, it helps uh, with any allergies you might have. Okay, there are my dry ingredients. I'm gonna mix them together lightly. And before we uh, put in some water, I want to tell you about some other cool books we've got at the library. Um, you, there's so many books about cooking, even for kids. It's awesome. This one is Rolled Doll's Revolting Recipes. Anybody remember Rolled Doll? A wonderful author of books like Matilda and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and James and the Giant Peach. He wrote so many great books. Um, this one is illustrated by the same guy who illustrates a lot of the Roald Dahl books, Quentin Blake, these interesting sketches. But as you can see from the cover even, there are real photos of the foods in there. So he takes fun recipe ideas from the books and turns them into real recipes. For example, Mosquitoes, toes, and womp fish rose most delicately fried. And then he turns it into a real recipe. Or, check this out, my friends. Lickable wallpaper. I'm not kidding. Lickable wallpaper. You gotta check out the book. It's awesome. There's also this one called It's Disgusting. And we ate it. Uh, this is true food facts from around the world and throughout history. Um, so I'm just going to open up the back here. And the back cover, it reveals some of the fun stuff that's inside there. Uh, you want to find out about corn fungus or about mouse stew or shark meat or raw seal liver or fried fish cheeks. All sorts of cool stuff. We got great books at the library. All right, there's my dry stuff mixed in. And now my recipe says, mix with enough water to make a soft dough. All right, we'll give it a try. I can always put in more water, so I'll start with just a little bit. And I got a couple different spoons to try. I'm not sure which one will work the best. Still pretty dry. I want it to be a soft dough. So I add some more water, a little stir.
Now, we're starting to come together. Starting to form a dough there. Hmm. Looking pretty good. It's starting to come together as a ball. I like that. Add a little bit more water. A little bit goes a long way. Remember, we can always add more later. I forgot to tell you, my first step before I started the video was to wash my hands. And you might also notice I've got my uh, apron on. It's a good idea to have some kind of apron to protect your clothes. All right, I've got a dough. Just like that, we've got a dough. Okay, before we, oh, let's, I'll tell you more stories about books while the pan heats with oil in it. First I have to rinse my hands a little bit from all that dough. And let me tell you about books and also magazines. Did you know that we have magazines at the library for kids? Check this out. This magazine, Chop Chop, is all about cooking for kids. This is the spring issue. And so there's all sorts of things about green spring vegetables. Spring green. Uh, you can find out all sorts of things to do with cucumbers. Um, you can make a spring vegetable saute. All sorts of stuff. Chop, chop. Available at the library. And here's another kid's magazine called Owl. And I found this issue that teaches me the difference between things like veganism, vegetarianism, pescatarianism. Always wondered what the difference is between those. Now I know. All right, my recipe says to fry in frying pan and oil, turning once. So here's my pan over here on the stove. And because we're frying in oil, I've got this nice lid. It's called a splatter screen. You can look through it, but it prevents oil from splashing out. Uh, it contains it a little bit in the pan, which is good both for cleanup and safety-wise. We're frying oil today, so this is something you have to do with an adult. You can't do this on your own. you got to be safe and work with an adult whenever you're at the stove. So I'm going to put in a little bit of oil. Actually, more than a little bit, because we're, we're not deep frying. Uh, but we're not just sauteing, we are frying. And if you're curious about those, the difference between those kind of words, let me show you another book. This one's called The Complete Cookbook for Young Chefs. This is by the people at America's Test Kitchen. They're kind of uh, scientists, and so it's a very sciencey book. Um, you'll notice there's a, a lot of words in there, a lot of information. Um, they explain things a lot. Uh, for example, decoding kitchen speak. Things to do with a sharp tool. If you, if you don't know what it means to peel or zest or chop or mince or slice something, um, this book will explain that kind of stuff. So very good for teaching about the science of cooking. America's Test Kitchen. Okay, I'm going to turn on my stove. Um, I checked. I'm an adult, and so I feel safe doing this. Uh, I'm going to turn on my stove to about medium. And I'm going to watch it. If I know about how long it takes to heat, oh, about a minute. While that goes... Let me show you another book. This is Chef Gino, Gino's Taste Test Challenge. 
Chef Gino, like Deanna Cook, who's coming on June 6th, also writes cookbooks for kids. Uh, let's see what he has. Oh man, lots of... This guy, that's Chef Gino. He looks like he knows how to cook. And there's some things I thought were interesting in here. This is a good one for parents. Uh, it has Chef Gino's tips for cooking with kids, the different ages at which it's appropriate for uh, kids to help in different ways in the kitchen. Uh, he has some kitchen rules that I found helpful. He's also got all sorts of fun recipes. I mean, the book, book is full of them. Um, pizza s'mores. Pizza bowls. A pizza toppings matrix, so you can decide what toppings to put on your pizza. Super helpful, great guy. Um, or maybe your style is to go a little older, and you remember the um, Laura Ingalls Wilder books, like Little House on the Prairie, Little House in the Big Woods. This is the Little House cookbook. One thing I really like about the way these recipes are organized there's food from the woods, wilds, and waters. Foods from tilled fields. Foods from gardens and orchards. Foods from the barnyard. That's a fun way of organizing it. Where do you find the ingredients? I can smell my oil, so it's starting to cook. Now here's what I do. I am going to, maybe I should have left a little bit of flour in there, in that bowl because I want to flour my hands a little bit, makes it easier to work with this stuff. Pinch, pinch off a small piece. Well, it's about the size of a, of a rubber ball, but you can make it different sizes. The, uh, what matters is how thick it ends up being. And because these have some leavening in them, I want them pretty thin. And they'll poof up. We're just gonna try a small one to start. I'm gonna put it in this hot oil. I'm gonna put some water in the oil from a distance, and if it splatters, then I know my oil's hot. So again, only do this for the parents around. Looks like it's hot. There it goes. I'm going to make another one while that's in there. There's plenty of space in there for more. That's a small one. And let's see, how big do we, how, how long do we want? It all depends on what, how long you like them cooked. Uh, they can be light brown or they can be golden. I'm going to kind of flatten mine out. Might, I might have added a little too much water. Uh, so if you have too much water, you can always add some more flour. And I hope that it's gonna puff up a little bit. I'm not sure. I'm not a professional. And I might have time, while those are cooking, to show you another two awesome books. So I've got my hands floured, I roll it around, and then I pat it down. It's not super thin like a pancake. Uh, sorry. Um, it's not as thin as a tortilla. What would you want it? Well, maybe it's a half an inch, a third of an inch thick. Let's try it. I want to see how my first one is doing. Flop it over. Uh. <laughs> Did I mention I'm not a professional? While those are cooking, here's another book I wanted to share with you. This one's called Grow, Raise, Catch, How We Get Our Food. This is another factual book. It's got a lot of information in there. It's got a bunch of beautiful real-world photos, too. 
Here are some vegetable farmers. Here are some berry farmers. So you get the idea uh, how we grow, raise, and catch our food. And one other interesting factual nonfiction book, What the World Eats. In this one, you get to see food from around the world by looking at one family's food for a week. Uh, let's see, where should we visit? What the world eats. We've got a bunch of different locations. Um, let's go to Egypt. Egypt will visit the Ahmed family. Page 62. Here they are. The Ahmeds. That's the food that they eat in a week. We recognize some of that stuff. Some of it might be new to you. And there's other information in here uh, from each location. It tells you where the country is. And they give a recipe, usually, for each location. So that can be a fun one if you want to explore food from around the world. Well, I think I mentioned I'm no professional. Uh, these didn't turn out that spectacular. And you might notice there's some smoke filling the kitchen. Uh, but hey, that's the way it goes. Here are my attempts at Navajo fry bread. And put on a little honey. Is delicious and you know, a little sweetness goes a long way it's a floury fried treat with some honey not bad if you make one that's better please tell us about it tell us what recipe you used and how your experience went happy cooking everybody